the Mama Kwaba at the bar IBTV, so to YouTube and iTunes, so Facebook IBTV. On Saka video, I mean, you subscribe on up, must share link in one so ammonia. No, you also mean Sakan, mean Sakan, or not so insane and money. Na video be able to abound him. A young person, a better video more as a me breathe. Ye try a horse, ma, ye bar, ye a cavity no answer. Minnie, Mamma Copper, some could you? Ediba, I beat him so. A minnie, vidri, would ye share? Ma fatu of video no, and only. Boys. Hi Evangelist. Hi Evangelist. What do you think you are doing? As you can see, we are getting ready to go and worship the miracle working God. You see my boys, this is not how it works. You need to give your lives to Jesus Christ first. But sir, we have already given our lives to the one Jesus himself describes in John 17.3 as the one true God. So there's no need giving it again to his prophet and messenger. And that's where you get it all wrong, young man. Jesus Christ was more than a prophet. He is the son, the son of God. In the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 41, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the son of God. In the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 11, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the son of God. In John chapter 1 verse 34, Jesus Christ is the son of God. And in John chapter 11 verse 27, Jesus Christ is the Messiah and the son of God. So then we ask, sir, is he a biological son or a metaphorical son? He is a begotten, a begotten son, according to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Pastor, begotten is the past participle of beget, which means to father or produce an offspring. And you and I know fully well that that can only be an attribute of man, not God. To say God begets is to blaspheme. Which is why some versions of the Bible, like the Revised Standard Version, has now removed the word begotten from the Bible. Obviously because it's unbefitting for a God to beget. In Quran chapter 19, our number 88 to 92, Alarama, help me with the Arabic version. And they say the most gracious has begotten a son. Surely, you have made a monstrous statement. At it, the skies are ready to burst, the earth to split asunder, and the mountains to fall in utter ruin. That they attribute to the most merciful, a son. Evangelist, the expression son of God was in common use in scripture, but was always employed metaphorically. And in no single instance did it connote a biological son. Similarly, the expression father didn't mean a biological father. Other prophets were also referred to as the children of God. In Luke 3, 35 to 38, Adam was called the son of God. In Psalm 89, 27, David was called the son of God. In 2 Samuel 7, 14, Solomon was called the son of God. So in numerous instances in the Bible, son of God was applied to prophets, to the righteous, and to believers, to mean servants, devotees, etc. <laughs> Small boys, they say, are young. What you may not have observed is that the S used in the case of Jesus Christ is a capital S, whilst those used for other prophets is a small S, which makes Jesus Christ a different son altogether. What you are holding is an English translation of the Bible. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was never an English man. He spoke a form of Hebrew called Aramaic, and there are no upper and lower case letters in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic. So then I ask this question, please, is it not the same exact words that was used for son in the original Aramaic of the New Testament, or the ancient Hebrew of the Old Testament that was used in the different context of the word son? Supposing that was true? 
How then can they mean different things in a translation? But Jesus Christ was conceived by his mother Mary through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Adam was created without a mother or a father. Allah created him with his own hands and built into him a soul. Sometimes all you need to appreciate certain things in this book is faith. Because this body washing, bowing and prostrating on the ground cannot grant you salvation. The face, the forehead, is the most noble part of the human body. To rub it in the dust before Allah is to make yourself low, showing not only your humility and your complete love for him, but your desperate need of him. In First Chronicles 29-20 in the Bible, David and all his assembly bowed down their heads and prostrated before the Lord. In Exodus 38-8 in the Bible, Moses hurried and bowed down his head towards the earth and worshipped. In Mark 14, 35, Jesus Christ fell on his face and did pray. In Genesis 17, 3, Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him. And in the Quran, chapter 22, 77, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu kawu wa judu wa abudu wa